It seems like every day I'm hearing about a crazy new AI product. As you may have heard, AI is having a very busy year. And I've been testing out dozens of these tools, finding some of them useful and others not so much. But a few of them have become a part of my daily life that I just cannot live without anymore. These are the five I've found that you need to know about if you're a content creator. And no, none of these are ChatGPT because I know you already know what that is. All right, let's get into it. This first one is called Gling, and it has saved me so much time editing. I haven't seen that many people talk about it, but this tool is super useful if you do a lot of video editing. Gling is really cool because it will identify your bad takes and any silences and cut them out. And you better believe I'm using it for this talking clip. I'm not editing this whole thing myself anymore, oh no. Using Gling, I'm able to take my timeline from a long clip with a lot of gaps like this to one that's more condensed down with all the silences cut out. So I'll show you guys how I actually use this. You can have it select multiple clips so you can basically upload your whole timeline and then I have selected silences and bad takes we'll click continue it doesn't take that long to process maybe five minutes if you have like a lot of footage and when it's done this is what it gives you you have everything transcribed so you can go through and cut things out just by erasing it from the transcription and on the bottom you can see a timeline so you have a more visual look at where things are cut out you can see for these two clips, I cut out the silences and the bad takes. You can go through the text and delete stuff if there's more things you wanna delete. I find that it's much faster to go through a transcription and delete things than to scrub through and watch the whole video. If we wanna export this, we click export. You can do Final Cut, Resolve, or Premiere. I'm gonna do Resolve. So we go ahead and import this. And you'll notice everything is already linked. We don't have to waste time relinking everything. It's amazing, like it's magic. And you can go through and edit a little bit more from here. With vlogs, I do need to make some more adjustments. Sometimes it cuts things out I don't want, you know, it's not perfect, but I find it is much faster to run it through Gling and then make my adjustments, then edit the whole thing from scratch. So this tool has been amazing and has saved me so much time. The next one I've been using a ton is Photoshop's new Generative Fill. This tool is so crazy, you guys. You can tell it to generate completely new backgrounds, objects, hairstyles, clothing, really anything that you wanna add to a photo. It can create it and blend it in in a way that looks so much better than you trying to do it yourself. So here's how it works. So we've got this photo open. First thing we're gonna do is select myself. I wanna change the background. So let's select inverse. And then you simply click generative fill and we can put anything in. Let's try at a beach <laughs> and see how it does. It usually takes about 10 seconds to generate three images for you. So here's the first one we've got. Not super realistic, but look at how it added a shadow onto the sand. That would take me so long to do manually. I don't even know how you do that. That one also looks decent. And the third one also looked pretty good. You can generate an unlimited amount of these. I found if I'm making a thumbnail and I don't love the background or find it's a little too busy, this is awesome to just give you some more options. It's also very useful if you need to extend a photo. So say I have this vertical photo, but I wanna make it into a thumbnail dimension. You simply need to select the photo area, select inverse, and then click generative fill, but don't enter any prompt. It'll use the rest of the photo as context and it usually does a pretty good job. In this case, I liked the first one the best. The second one was kind of a miss and the third one also didn't match super well but you can regenerate as many times as you want look at the texture of the blanket and the shadows on it like that looks super realistic then you can go in and add objects so i decided to add a picnic basket the more specific you are the better and it gives me some options that look pretty dang real it did a good job finding a picnic basket that actually matches the lighting of the scene which is crazy you can also use it to remove things so you just select what you want to remove type in remove and it will usually come up with something based on the colors in the scene. So it doesn't do a perfect job with this, but the last one probably would work pretty well. But why would you ever want to remove the dog? Let's be real. We'd want to remove the sewer thing. Like that is much better. And you guys, I actually went a little crazy with this one and decided to fully complete the photo and add another Sheltie. It ended up looking so real. I sent it to my sister, who is the owner of the really cute dog in the photo. And guys, she thought it was real. Wait, did you think that Sheltie was real? I was like, why does it have a leash on? But yeah, I thought it was real. I also was like, why did she be randomly text me this? Why did she tell me this immediately when it happened? <laughs> So sometimes it takes a few tries, but if you adjust what you're telling it and you try it a few times, you can usually get something that looks pretty good. The next one I've been using pretty much daily is Notion's new AI Assist. Notion is awesome for planning out video outlines or just your life in general anyway. They also have a new AI tool that is very handy and I've found a couple uses for it that I just keep going back to over and over. The first one is the Continue Writing tool. When I'm planning out a 
video, I will just write everything out and then I'll ask the Notion AI to continue writing. And a lot of times it will think of stuff that I never even thought of. It will give me more B-roll ideas, more interview questions to ask people, or even just ideas in general for the video. And yes, you can definitely get this out of ChatGPT, but what I really like about Notion's AI is it formats everything really well. So I've been using it a lot to reformat my crazy video outlines. So sometimes I will just do a brain dump and write everything I'm thinking for my video. And it looks kind of crazy. Like it's actually really confusing to look at. If I go to shoot, I have a hard time finding where all the B-roll shots are. So I'll just highlight everything and ask the AI to reformat it in a way that's easier to read. And then it just makes it so much easier to find everything I'm looking for when I go to shoot but I didn't have to spend all the time organizing it. I think this actually saves me a lot of time while shooting because I'm just more organized without actually having to organize things myself. I'd rather just put everything in the document and then have Notion's AI rearrange it in a way that makes sense. With this one, honestly, you could get a similar effect from ChatGPT. It also can organize things, but I just think it's really convenient that it's already within Notion. It just makes it easier to scan the page and find what you need. This next one makes it easy to reformat your horizontal videos into vertical videos. And that is with the smart reframe tool within DaVinci Resolve. So normally if we have some horizontal or landscape footage like this and we go and put it in a vertical timeline, everything is just a little bit off center and you'd have to go through and manually fix it. With smart reframe and Vinci, it will use artificial intelligence to identify what to focus on and then it will reframe everything and it can even track movement. So to do this, I just highlight all the clips, go into the inspector up here. You'll see a section for smart reframe. You'll see it says auto, we'll just press reframe and it automatically has moved everything over. And you can see it even sometimes will move with the footage. It's actually keyframed things with movement. So when I take a step to the side, it moves over to the side a little bit too. And honestly, sometimes I don't like when it does that and you can delete these keyframes if you want. You do have to manually do that. So you can see how I pick up this plate and it actually tracks and moves the whole thing over so that you can still see me. Pretty impressive. This will save you a ton of time if you do cut downs of your videos for YouTube shorts or TikTok and when you still want to manually select the clips for yourself. But what if you don't even have time for this? Like that's where our next AI tool comes in. It can save you a lot of time, but it does have a drawback as well. This one is on a website called getmunch.com and it will take your fully finished video that's already on YouTube and reformat it into short form videos with subtitles and everything just like this one. $35. We didn't do anything too crazy in London. We actually did more of the like less expensive activities. While we were in Europe, we didn't take any Uber. All you have to do is copy and paste the YouTube link into the website. It takes about 40 minutes for it to process the footage and it gives you dozens of different options to choose from with the subtitles and everything. It also does keyword research based on what you're saying. So it'll try and recommend which one it thinks is gonna perform the best. It's not actually re-editing or rearranging the clips in the video. It basically transcribes the whole thing and tries to select the part of the video that it thinks would do the best as a short form video. So I really think this is amazing if you have a podcast and you wanna do clips from your podcast. But I think for main channel videos like mine, it's always still gonna be better to completely re-edit the video and use vertical footage that was shot on an iPhone. You actually do need to re-edit it, maybe do a different voiceover. But if I had a podcast, I would definitely use this. Because for podcasts, you don't really need to be rearranging things. And this actually does a really good job finding the interesting parts of the video that you could turn into clips. This one is $50 a month on the low end, so it is one of the more pricey AI tools, but they do let you do one for free, so it's fun to try it out. Those are all the recent AI tools that I actually think are really useful. Some of the other tools like Mid Journey that can create these crazy photos or they're pretty cool, but I just haven't found a really use for it for myself. I find the Photoshop beta to be way more useful as a creator, but I'm sure I'm missing some. Like there's gotta be more cool AI tools out there. So if you guys know any others that I just need to know about, comment them down below. But I also have one bonus AI tool I didn't mention. If you wanna find out what it is, you can sign up for my newsletter and you will get it emailed to you, as well as other tips and cool AI tools for creators to use. I'm gonna start just like summing up all these things I'm learning as a creator that you guys could also be using if you're trying to grow on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok. I will spill all the tea, all my secrets, everything I've learned in my newsletter. So link to that down below if you wanna see the bonus AI tool. That is gonna be it for this video. Don't forget to comment other AI tools I should try and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.